So once you know what goes into a good graph, how do you make one using Google Sheets? Well, first thing you want to do is you want to start with your data. So we can see here I've already got my title, Making a Graph in Google Sheets, and you can see that I already have my data here. Okay, So here's my atomic number and my atomic mass. So what you're going to do is you are going to highlight this information. Okay, So you want to click and highlight um, your data that you're going to put in. Notice I have my columns titled. That's going to make my life easier when I go to do it. I have my data typed in already. And so I go under Insert and then Chart. And then, let me drag this over to where you can see it better. Okay, and then it gives you um, some different chart options. So you can see down here you've got a bar chart, you've got a column chart, and if you click on them, it'll show you what it would look like. And none of these really look like a good science graph. But if you notice, they've got one here that says more. Okay, that's what you are going to want to click on. So we click on more. And now you start to see the stuff that we're looking for. So you can see an area graph, okay, and you can play around and see all the different types of graphs. I said you won't typically use a pie graph in here, but if I wanted to take that data, put it into a pie graph, that's how it would look, or take my pie and make it a donut, all right. But typically what you will be using is a scatter, um, like this. Or there might be a rare occasion for using a trend gap graph, but most of the time you'll be using a scatter. And now this starts to look like more of a traditional graph that you are used to seeing. If you take a look and you see like this one here is grayed out, okay, if I go to click on it, um, it will then tell me that I can't do it and why and it gives you an example. So notice the ones that you want are in color. So we want a scatter chart, so that's what I'm going to do. You can go to Customize and start titling things now. So underneath Customize, Chart Title. So this will be the title of my graph. And this is, this here I graphed the, you can see, the atomic number versus the atomic mass. So the dependence, dependence of atomic mass um, based on atomic number, okay? And that's the title of my chart. Now the legend is, and if I click, unclick there, I can see it, okay? The legend is this thing here on the side. All right. I don't really want that legend. The only time I want that legend is if I was graphing a couple of different things. I was graphing mass and protons and neutrons and electrons all in the same graph, then I would have a legend. So since I don't want a legend, I would come over here, all right, and then I would click, oops, click, I want no legend, so none for the legend, and it disappears. All right. You can change the font but typically you just want to leave it something basic. Same thing with the background colors. All right, now the horizontal axis. Remember the horizontal axis is also known as the x-axis down here. So that's what we're going to label next. So the title of my horizontal axis is the atomic number. Now remember that's the label. I also want the units. That would be protons. Okay. Now the minimum and maximum that you're given in this spot here, that is going to affect this scale. Now it would not be appropriate for this to leave this right there as 22.5 because you don't have 22.5 protons in something. You don't have half a proton in an element. So that doesn't really make sense so we want to change the minimum and the maximum and then the labels there. So I can change the minimum to 20. And let's say you had a lot of stuff, you could change the maximum to 50. 
And when I change the maximum to 50, notice my graph changes. I can put it back to 30. I can change my minimum to 0. Okay? And when I click on the next field, it does that. Another fast way to go from one field to another is to use the tab key. So I use 20, tab over to 30. So that's actually pretty good for it. And it tends to give you some good stuff. Now, for the grid lines down here, this is where we want to get rid of that 22 and a half. So we want to play with this right there. Now, minor grid lines would be small lines. We want to play with the major ones. The major ones are these big lines right here. Okay, so here and here. So this is saying I have five of them. One, two, three, four, five, like that. We want more. Okay, let's go all the way up to the maximum of 10. Now, this starts to look like something usable. Now our lines correspond with the dots. It makes a lot more sense. I really don't like how it cuts off that 30. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change that 30 to 32 and see if that makes it better. Oh no, that makes it worse. Okay, so boom, we're going to put that back to 30 and leave it alone. And that's the thing about these graphs. You just play with them. Okay, so that took care of my horizontal axis. We want to change the vertical axis. So right here again, this is where we're going to change things. So if you click on that region, okay, so if we click on there and go to left vertical, okay, so that's going to do this axis. Notice it went blank. And now I can title this what I like, which is atomic mass. And my units for atomic mass are AMUs. Okay. So unlike what you might have learned in the past, all graphs don't have to start at zero. I mean, if I start my graph at zero, that just looks silly. Okay. So if you don't like it starting at 40 down in the corner, you can always change it to something else, like 35, okay, and take it up to, well, let's see there, it looks like 70 is a good maximum, okay, and then we go down, scroll down, and then major grid lines, same thing, you can go up to the maximum of 10, and that gives us some good variation. Um, I don't quite like the 35 to 70, maybe 35 to 60, all right, and take a look and see if that works. Well, look what you notice happened when I changed it. So what happened to my points? Whoops. Okay, what happened to my points over here? They disappeared. So if you look, oh, <laughs> okay, if you look at the data, if I drag this out of our way, you can see my biggest number is 65 down here. So stopping it at 65 uh, or 60 is a bad idea. So I'm going to drag this back into where we can see it. And since our biggest number is greater than 65, let's go ahead and leave that at 70. So that's a nice, good graph there. Okay. And then once we got everything, now your points, if you want to play with your points, your points are based on atomic mass. If you want to change the color of them, there's our nice cardinal color. You could change the size. There's big blobs. Big blobs aren't good. Okay. You could do small little dots if that's better for you. But again, the default size is good. Once you're pretty happy with everything, you can click insert and it's going to put it in there. Now, um, this is covering up your data. And so on your worksheet, you don't want to cover up your stuff. So if you click on it and hold it down, Notice I have a little hand cursor and I can now drag it to where I like it. And then my cursor, notice as I get around the edges, the cursor is changing sizes. So again, if I click on it and drag, remember I said graph should be big, I can do that there. And now I have a bigger size graph. If you decide you want to change these numbers and you don't like it, let's say I really don't like 30 not being on the graph. Okay, I can play with it here. So this little down arrow is what I clicked, and you want to click Advanced Edit. Of course, you could delete it, start it all over, copy the chart, move it around, but we want Advanced Edit. 
And advanced edit takes us back to where we were. I'm going to put that back where we can see it. And then I can go ahead and play with the, the scales again. Okay, so I didn't like the scale like that, so let's try 36. Oh, that's even worse. You know, play with it. 34. That's uh, not too bad. 32. <clears throat> you know, really 30 for this particular graph works best. And that's just something you have to play with. It's trial and error. Okay, and again, you click update, and it will automatically update your graph. Okay, so let's say you made a mistake on the data, and I'm going to move this up. Okay, it's, it's good where it's at. Let's say I made a mistake on the data, and I need to change a number. Let's say this shouldn't have been 20. Let's say this should have been 25. So if I type in that and change the number, my graph, notice it automatically updates. Okay, so if you make a, make, a, make a mistake in the data, don't think that you have to make a brand new graph. Okay, all you need to do is go back and change the data points to what works. Let's say the 65.4 was wrong and it really should have been 42. Boom, I changed it and notice my little dot drops. And I was completely wrong, so control Z, my favorite key, undo, undo, and the little dots go back. Okay, so that's the real nice thing about those. Okay, so um, one of the limitations I do want to point out is that Google Sheets will not do a connect the dots for a scatter plot. Okay, so I have looked into it, and what I'm talking about is sometimes for these graphs, we want a connect the dots feature, and it's not going to happen, at least not anytime soon. Um, Google hasn't put that update out there. Now other graphing programs like Excel will do it and there's some free graphing programs online that will do it, um, but Google Sheets doesn't. Um, you know, all things considered though, this is a great tool for it being free. It's very easy to do, okay? It's um, a great tool to know. And if you have any questions about it, just ask or search the web.